Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the Swindon Town Swindley Poopers. We're taking on Everton. Um, I would say that this is a game we must win, but in fact, it is not. It is a game we can lose um, as long as we win our last game because Manchester United lost, which is wonderful. Plus, we have a ginger referee, Derek Milborough, who is always generous to us. So at the moment, at least, everything is coming up Swindley Pooper. Um, this is our second to last game as a team together. The 11 uh, boys who are starting, but also all the guys on the bench, all the guys in the reserve squad. Um, you know, and, and uh, we, before the game, we, we just took some time. You know, if we win this game, I, I don't even know how it works. Like, the, 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 uh, the confetti might fall today. Um, but, uh, you know, we just took some time before the game to, uh, to talk about how uh, thankful we are, how excited we are. Um, you know, the the FIFA 11 guys are excited to move into the future um, on their own. And, of course, uh, Ball John Green and other John Green are, are excited to move into the future with me. Um, we still haven't quite figured out the exact mechanics of that. Um, you know, there is, uh, there is always the TARDIS, um, but uh, I don't really know how that thing works. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the best solution or not. But uh, we're just going to try to win, and then um, we're going to see what happens with FIFA 13. Oh, buddy, you should have scored. Um, yeah, but I'll tell you, it's just been a magical ride for the Swoodly Poopers. There's no other way to say it. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, winning and losing and excitement and disappointment and how to deal with all of them. Um, in life, it is, I think, the only thing more important than being a, a good loser is being a, a good winner because the thing about being a bad winner is that if you're a bad winner, you don't actually win. Um, this is the theme of the movie Cars, actually. Look at look at other John Green! He's an unstoppable machine! Oh, he was stopped. Then Dima Goldilocks with a not very good shot. You know, these guys clearly want to win this game, boy. Um... But uh, yeah, so I want to uh, I want to talk about how to how to win well and how to lose well. Um, the best way to win well is to um, be humble, even if you don't feel humble, and uh, sportsmanlike to show good sportsmanship. And that goes not just for when you are playing sports, but for when you win a spelling bee or the hand of the maiden whom you love or whatever it is. Um, it's really hard in that moment to be uh, empathetic. Like, I remember um, one, of the best, uh, one of the best tweets I saw on election day was uh, some hardcore Obama supporter who said, um, remember that 47% of Americans uh, are bummed out right now. And that's a really, it's an important thing to be aware of, um, wh wh whether your team or, or your ideology or your whatever is winning or losing, it's important to remember uh, that there are other people who feel differently and who are not monsters, and, um, or many of whom aren't monsters anyway, anyway and uh, who, feel, uh, who feel disappointed or, 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 or surprised or sad or whatever. Um, and so I think like, the key to both uh, winning well and losing well, like the key to so much else in life, is empathy. Um, you've got to imagine what it's like to be someone else. Um, and you also have to trust that people, um, in general aren't like out to get you or, or anything like that. Um, that, uh, you know, people are making the best decisions that they can make. Um, they aren't, they aren't idiots. They aren't evil. They aren't, uh, yes, they don't, uh, they don't have it in for you. One of the very difficult things about being a person is that you never get to know what it's like to be anyone else in any kind of like, uh, uh, real way like other people's lives can never be as real to you as, as your own life and that um, is, is quite 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 a problem uh, one that we spend I think like basically most of our time either indulging or trying to get out of um, but uh, when you can imagine that that when you can understand other people's uh, pain in the face of your loss is when uh, is when you can be a good winner and I'm always impressed with that in uh, professional sports um, or, or I'm usually impressed with it I should say that uh, there is there is a fair amount of respect for you know this is a fellow professional who's who, who you know is 
doing the same thing I did, has sacrificed a lot to, to get to this point and, um, you know, wanted to win this as much as I did and didn't. There was a great moment uh, in last year's Carling Cup final in, in real life where, um, or what I consider to be real life, I guess to Fat Lucas it isn't real life. There was a great moment in last year's Carling Cup final. Come on, guys, we can't give up a goal here. Let's not be stupid. Okay. Um, where uh, Steven Gerrard, the, the uh, I would argue the greatest player in the history of the world, certainly the best looking, um, uh, was in a, a Carling Cup final against um, against a team on which his cousin actually played. And his cousin missed a, a critical penalty that, uh, that, that, that um, ended the game. Um, and uh, Liverpool won. And as all of these players on Liverpool are running together to celebrate, Steven Gerrard is running to his cousin um, to console him. And, uh, and to say I know how it feels because Gerrard once missed a very, very important penalty. Um, and that kind of, uh, that kind of sportsmanship uh, is where real winning is made right like the person who really for me the two people who really won in that moment uh were these two cousins for whom the game even an extremely important game uh was less important than uh than their um than their relationship um so that's uh that, that i think so i think the key i think the key is is trying to be empathic um and you know, trying to understand that uh, someone else is, is like fully human and has their own, like you know, their own wants and needs, and that like generally, the other thing to remember, uh, the thing I was going to talk about in the second half, is that good news for someone is almost always bad news for someone else. Like occasionally, there will be like straight, all the way good news, like we cured cancer, um, but that kind of news is very rare. Almost always. Um, it's the kind of news where you're like, well, that's good if you're X and it's bad if you're Y. Um, I remember like, uh, and, and, uh, you know, um, Kurt Vonnegut once said about the firebombing of Dresden that, um, that it had benefited exactly one person, Kurt Vonnegut, because it, it, it inspired him to write the, the novel Slaughterhouse-Five, which then, you know, went on to sell millions of copies and make him millions of dollars, um, uh, so, you know, even, even in that extreme case, uh, what was obviously the worst possible news for many people uh, became indirectly, or so he said anyway, good news for Kurt Vonnegut. I think he was saying that, you know, partly in jest and it, with the typical edge of, edge of anger and uh, disgust that, uh, that makes his work so good. But, um, uh, but you know, there's always, uh, there's always, yeah, you always have to think about who, Who's benefiting, and um, and in the case of like non tragedies, you know, like if you won a spelling bee and someone else, lo or if you lost a spelling bee and someone else won it, you have to you have to think like you know this is uh, this is really nice for that person, and maybe they need it, um, and you know, and maybe in the end, like uh, the world will be better served by by this spelling bee winner than by another, um, and I think like once you start being able to do that in your life, you become just a lot. Uh, like both it, in a way I get that it dulls the intensity of all of all experience which is something that like teenagers in particular seem to hate like uh it seems like a lot of the teenagers I know at least would rather have um like epic fails and epic wins than sort of like wins where they're conscious of the um pain that their victory might have caused someone else and losses where they're uh you know able to understand how glorious this is for someone else. Um, I get that, that like the epic win and the epic fail feels much better. Um, but I, I, I mean, in my life, at least, like I'm a lot like happier and less crazy when, um, when I can contextualize it a little and, and keep the, um, the rises and the dips uh, as low as possible. Uh, plus, you know, in the end, I think when you when you see yourself at the center of history and you see like good news for you as good news for the world and bad news for you as bad news for the world, like when you get to that place, in the end, all you're really doing um, is is becoming really controlled by your own narcissism um, and you're being defined defined by that experience and not able to see like the world outside of yourself at all and that's just not very fun um 
at least in my experience. Oh, speaking of my experience, I did not experience scoring a goal there. I was ready to say I experienced goal. I, every time I have a good call, it doesn't work out. It's frustrating. Come on, boys. You're better than this. <laughs> better than this. Oh, so uh, in short, like uh, I think it's important to try to find find a way to be gracious and grateful, no matter what the, uh, um, yeah, w when it's something that you care about. I don't know. I had this a lot with romantic relationships where they would go away that maybe I didn't want, such as toward another boy. Um, but boy, I I am a lot. Ha well, I mean, you know, I guess if my wife left me for another dude, I'd be pretty upset. But. Uh, Part of the reason that doesn't happen is because uh, I'm able to contextualize my life a little bit better than I was able to do when I was a kid. Um, so, yeah. All right. Looks like it might be a standard nil-nil uh, draw for the Swoodley Poopers, um, which, again, is a victory because Manchester United just lost. And I think it puts us in a place where we could even draw the last game and still – I don't even know. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what the results are. Oh, okay, it was a nil-nil draw. Looks like it's going to be another nil-nil draw. All we got to do is win tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.